morning uh, honorable members uh, officials of the department uh, of monitoring and evaluation banyamza mamkakaza good molo good molo sir njani happy to attend the ganela happy la nat gabiko any apologies There's one apology that I received from the minister. She's attending Minmac. She's in Minmac. Yes, yes. Okay. Any further apologies, Mam Kakaza? Good morning, Chair Unjani. Happy Lanata Kondo Unjani. The Pilele Shala Kondo. Chair, what will you promote? The M Kapa is also attending the Minmac meeting. And I've got the apology chair from Minister Uramakopa from TPLE, not the M, not the M, or what TPLE Nayeche. They 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 also send an apology. They are not going to. Uh, they are not available for today's meeting, chair. Um, Minister yeah. Uramakopa is, is participating back to to participating. We back to school program in KZN mm. and uh, as well as the OTM. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, are there any apologies on your side? If none, uh, I love. Yes. Chairperson, go to the Uh, I, I must uh, uh, apologize, Chef. If 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 I simply uh, disappear, it might be because of the cause of the electricity. There's no more electricity in the area uh, since early uh, this morning. So it might Davis. have a, a little problem. Thank you. All right. We are grateful and happy that you are with us uh, at this uh, juncture, and hopefully. It will uh, hold until we end our meeting. Honourable members, allow me to take uh, this opportunity to welcome you to the Portfolio Committee meeting on agriculture, land reform, and rural development. Uh, we have invited uh, the Department uh, of uh, Monitoring and Evaluation uh, to come before the committee. Uh, they will be uh, giving us two presentations. The one is a briefing uh, on the evaluation of land restitution program. The second briefing, honorable members, will be on uh, the evaluation of the National Food and Nutrition Security Plan. Allow me, therefore, I see a hand. Uh, uh, no, no, it's fine, Chair. You can continue because there were only three members on the platform that I so now I can see that oh, Mr. Matsipa is joining, so we can continue, Chair. Thanks. Oh, we didn't have Cora, we say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I just uh, assumed when I saw Honorable Letlape on the platform, I thought I we are complete. We can proceed. Uh, thank you, Honorable Members, uh, and welcome you all uh, on the platform. Allow me to invite uh, the officials from DPME uh, to uh, give us uh, the briefings on uh, the two presentations. We will take them one after the other, honorable members, and then follow with uh, questions of clarity and uh, then conclude with responses on the two presentations. Welcome to the officials of the DPME. You may proceed. You have 30 minutes on both presentations. Uh, good morning. I, my name is Godfrey Mashamba. I am the Deputy Director General responsible for evaluations in the department. I will start with the presentation on the land restitution. I am just 
looking at an opportunity to share from my side. I hope it is visible. It's visible. Uh, can you put it on slide view? Thank you, Honorable Chair, and good morning to um, all members, um, uh, all honorable members of the committee and colleagues that have been able to join the, the presentation. We will start with the briefing on the evaluation of the land restitution program uh, to the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. The purpose of this presentation um, is to brief the Portfolio Committee on the evaluation um, study. This study was completed in March 2023, and as per invitation of the committee, uh, we have structured the presentation to um, outline the findings, to outline the findings and observations, to uh, brief you about the methodology that we followed, the findings, as well as the an update on the progress on the implementation of the the evaluation recommendations as per request of the committee. South Africa's land restitution program has been implemented since the democratic transition 29 years ago. The, the Restitution of Land Rights Act, as well as Section 25 of the Constitution, uh, provides a, a basis for, for the land restitution program, which was started also in 1994. It seeks to reverse the discriminatory policies of the white uh, land consolidation during the height of apartheid, which possessed uh, displaced uh, close to or more than 3.5 million uh, people from their land, causing harm in terms of uh, economic prosperity, in terms of psychological uh, and long-term uh, trauma, intergenerational trauma that we still find today. So the program on land restitution was meant to reverse that and redress, provide effective redress uh, and, and return um, uh, uh, families or uh, the households that are affected to normality. Now, the study that we have done, um, the, the, the part that is marked, is marked blue on this slide is the part that we, we amended slightly in order to recognize the uh, partners that were involved in this particular study. Uh, it involved the partnership of Commission of Restoration of Land Rights, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, the International Initiative for Impact Evaluation, 3IE, um, University of Cape Town, uh, who were the, the lead researchers, University of Cape Town, Southern Africa, Labor um, and Development Research Unit, SADRU, as well as the DPME. The study um, uh, was to evaluate the impact of land restitution program on the welfare and well-being of households or beneficiaries of, of, uh, of the restitution program. It interviewed a, a close to um, just more than 3,000 um, households, uh, which involved both the beneficiaries of land restitution program from the period of 10 years since 2013 up to uh, 2022. Um, uh, and also a, a group that is called a control group, which is um, a, a group of households that were not, um, had not received uh, their, their restitution yet. So results reflect a comparison between those that received and those that did not receive in order to determine the the impact of this program. That is in short. It also did um, involve a qualitative assessment where um, uh, some communities in the Eastern Cape, at KZN, were actually interviewed to draw case studies and qualitative outcomes in terms of their um, experiences or or, or benefit from the, 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 the program itself. 
So um, going now to the findings of the study, um, overall, uh, what is the, the findings of this study is that land restitution, in summary, is a successful intervention uh, for redress, equitable redress, that is, it restores dignity of beneficiaries um, as um, as we continue uh, the the need for there's a need for a more efficient process and greater awareness and clearer mechanisms for for actually implementing the program. What we see in this slide is that restitution on its own was found to break the cycle of poverty. Um, there are large magnitude transfers where there is cash and land uh, because um, in terms of restitution there are options. There is an option where beneficiaries can opt for land and option where beneficiaries can um, opt for, for financial compensation. Uh, so in either way, whether in cash or in land rights, it caused a sustained improvement to beneficiaries' well-being through improved per capita income. Uh, to some extent, that a, a per capita income of, of beneficiary household would increase by as much as 36%. The program has an economic case for equitable redress and um, also through equitable redress, through restitution, the psychological effect of it by being rescued from poverty, poverty trap, a, and a better a sense of future prosperity, economic prosperity, psychological effect in terms of, of um, depression uh, is found to, to reduce. So, there is an opportunity also, uh, as we review the study, for innovating by using small groups when dealing with beneficiaries of uh, settlement options. Because in larger groups, there were also challenges that are, are noted in terms of um, complexity. As the group becomes larger, uh, there are complexities that come with it. But also in certain cases where uh, in fighting amongst the beneficiaries, uh, the same group of beneficiaries which tend to prolong processes. Uh, on the other hand, uh, administrative processes also uh, discouraging, so, so, so discouraging others to pursue the, the land uh, option. Uh, that's why the evaluation also reveals some disappointing outcomes with regard to land restoration and development. Uh, many families tend to benefit to, to opt for cash compensation instead of land restoration. And uh, where land is returned, a uh, very little development tend to, to take place. Those are um, some of the limitations of what we found. Uh, in this slide, we uh, we've already explained this, but in essence, what it essentially says is that where there are big rewards, uh, there are also greater economic outcomes that are observed in beneficiaries um, uh, in terms of per capita uh, consumption, which increases by as much as 36%. Uh, uh, in, in terms of economic outcomes, also restitution improves living standards of beneficiary families. That, that is in short. In this slide, we want to highlight that out of the qualitative research, um, uh, the case studies that we've done, a, there are better outcomes in terms of social cohesion. A, as um, a, we restore land, a families and, and households and communities tend to reconnect, um, including also other uh, benefits in terms of uh, return to ancestral land, in terms of how a, um, the people feel generally around the, the whole restitution uh, program. Also here, this slide affirms what we have already said, that uh, improved economic um, outcomes and uh, return to, to land improves psychological well-being. It disrupts um, the cycle of poverty and depression scores uh, of beneficiary household when compared to to non beneficiaries tend to to be to be to be lower or improved in in, in a sense. So in terms of the recommendations going forward. Land restoration programs had a positive impact uh, on household uh, living standards and psychological well-being in South Africa. Seeing that this is one of the first uh, 
study of this scale, it tends to uh, uh, present a blueprint uh, on how things should be done going forward. Uh, so to ensure success of land restoration program, policymakers, um, um, as, as per this study, should consider the social cohesion of communities and provide appropriate support. Um, uh, the study recommend continuing with the program uh, in order to improve living standards and, and well-being of, uh, of um, uh, dispossessed households. The, the study also finds that respondents often don't understand the restitution process. So, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done um, uh, in improving awareness and understanding amongst the, the claimants about the process itself um, and the intricacies of the process, including also the recent improvements that uh, the commission has announced that they are doing. Uh, people need to be able to understand it well so that they can interact with it uh, well. Issues of language also, uh, in a sense that documentation and information is presented in English, it's important to then have translated and explanations that are in a ways that um, potential beneficiaries are able to understand. Now, in terms of the progress and implementation of the results of this evaluation, DPME as the lead um, has actually um, a, 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 a presented the, discussed this uh, evaluation internally within the DPME. Uh, and on the part of the DALRAT, the minister has been briefed. Uh, uh, the minister uh, at DALRAT um, um, has um, uh, presented a media uh, briefing uh, on this Monday, indicating that they are happy with the study um, and outlining a process going forward in terms of what um, would be done. Um, the commission indicated that there is a conference that is planned where stakeholders in this sector would engage on the findings of the study. And that is where a, a way forward in terms of improvement plan, what need to be done going forward will be determined. That is in short the, the presentation on this particular evaluation. And then it is recommended the portfolio committee notes the report and also the way forward uh, that is um, I proposed. Thank you very much. I would go to the next uh, set of slides for for the other presentation. Let me take this one down. Thank you. Thank you, DDG Mashamba. You may proceed to the next presentation. That is a wrong presentation. Let me select the correct one. This is the now the presentation on the um, evaluation on the national food and nutrition security um, plan. Um, this particular presentation, the request was the same uh, from the portfolio committee. Uh, it uh, adopts the same kind of structure. So this presentation, this uh, um, particular evaluation was completed in October 2023. Um, and, 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 and then the processes are still underway also of, of um uh, uh, digesting the the findings and recommendation within government, uh, it has also been been um, um, uh, communicated to presented formally to the Department of um, Agriculture, uh, Land Reform and Rural Development uh, for for further handling. Uh, in short, the 
the National Food Nutrition Plan was adopted in 2018. Um, for a period of 2018, I need to remove this. For a period of 2018 to 2023, in line with the 2013 cabinet approved national policy on food and nutrition security, its mission is to improve food security and reduce malnutrition in all its forms in South Africa. And this uh, is important in order to um, uh, enable citizens to lead productive and healthy lives. All this is consistent with the a sustainable development goal, particularly a goal number one, which is about ending poverty uh, in South Africa, we also have the same kind of goal of ending poverty and ending hunger in order to achieve food, food, food security and nutrition and sustainable agriculture. So there's a number of SDGs that um, are addressed through this particular particular a, a, a program. And um, at, the, at the national development plan level, there's a number of outcomes that are influenced by this because uh, nutrition also helps to improve educational outcome performance and 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 and, and health in, in, in many other ways. So the new this program had uh, six strategic objective at its inception, but uh, it was later increased to seven. The objectives are firstly to improve alignment in terms of policies, programs, uh, uh, so that implementation can be more effective and achieve results. The second strategic objective is to um, establish inclusive local food value chains to strengthen them. And the third one, to uh, expand targeted social protection measures uh, and sustainable livelihood programs. The fourth one is to scale high impact nutrition intervention, targeting particularly vulnerable groups, women, infants, and children. Um, and then uh, to, um, to influence people across the life cycle to be informed about, to increase awareness in general about food and nutrition decisions that they make. Uh, the sixth one was to enhance m and &E processes. And the seventh one to um, to um, um, uh, drive entrepreneurship and small business development in this uh, in relevant spaces. Then um, there is a slight correction in this slide where we uh, uh, put a, 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 a line there and on top. It was a mistake, typo. We corrected here. So in twenty fourteen, as background, the DPME Commission and evaluation on nutrition intervention for children under five. And then in that study, the main uh, outcomes of that study were that South Africa had a good mix of health and nutrition policies, uh, which should address the immediate basic and underlying factors associated with poor nutrition, but also that arising from that study, that there was lack of coordination or a, a gap in terms of coordinating body above line ministries in order to hold the implementing um, agencies or ministries accountable and ensure that there is um, um, private sector and civil society and experts being brought into the process of, 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 of this whole thing. So that is why this program was um, actually introduced. The, the, the evaluation uh, uh, considered the following. It, it, its focus was to um, uh, to understand, actually, let me go back a little bit to say that the this study was supposed to have been completed in 2020 so that it informs the remainder of the period of the evaluation, but the evaluation itself delayed. So, but the findings of it are still relevant in a sense that there is a, a process underway to develop the second iteration of this particular plan. So the findings that we have here are still relevant. They still achieve the objective intended of tracking progress to date, but also identifying improvements going forward. So um, a, a, a case studies were, uh, I mean, interviews were conducted in terms of this study, a drawing from a, what we call the stakeholder map a, reflected by this cycle here that 
around this program, you find national departments, you also find a uh, provincial uh, departments, you find the local and district stakeholders, as well as the private sector and civil society organizations and international organization in this whole map. So the approach of the study was that um, um, a key informant interviewees were identified, organizations and individuals identified to be interviewed. Uh, and there was a set of questions. There was also a data sets that were collected um, in order to respond to the, the, the 65 indicators uh, that are reflected um, uh, under the, the, the seven objectives of the strategic objectives of the program. So data is sourced to assess where are we in terms of um, the outcomes or results intended uh, on that. So, so this is a, a broad mapping. The picture on the, on the left and on the right hand side a reflects what we call the theory of change, which shows how the different strategic objectives are interrelated in contributing to the end outcome of improving a, a nutrition, health, and well-being. So, so um, uh, under them, under each one of them, there are specific intended outputs and, and process uh, progress uh, uh, targets as well as indicators. Now, in this slide, we start to summarize now the findings of the, of the study. Um, broadly, the plan is highly relevant within South Africa's food system as it responds to an urgent need for food and nutrition security. It is also in line with the national policy and food and nutrition security and policy commitments in terms of the SDGs. A, a, and one more important thing is that the particular the particular focus of this program to target the most vulnerable, that is women, mothers, infants, and young children, and the adolescent girls, makes it even more, more relevant for South Africa, given the contextual factors, mm -hmm. uh, either at an aggregated national level or in, in particular regions or provinces of the country. Uh, another thing that to highlight with this slide is that progress has been made um, um, around the, when we assess the 65 indicators uh, in the report, uh, it's reflected in table four, which gives a summary that about 11 of the 65 indicators were met at the time of conducting this study. Uh, that is, they, they make about 17% a, a met, and then 6% which were had made um, a progress and were likely to be met by the time um, uh, of the end of the program, whereas 29% had made substantive progress towards uh, um, uh, 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 the targets, but were, however, unlikely to, to meet the targets by the time of the program. And there were others that were not met at all and highly unlikely to be met, which is about 18%, about half of the 65 indicators were unlikely to be met. Um, and some of them were either no clear indicators or or there was no data to verify uh, whether they were met, they would be met or not. So, so they, they, that is where the progress, progress is. And amongst the 17% that were met, just examples of those is that the volume of maize produced and they, they, they were good agricultural practice certification of smallholder farmers. There was also support that was provided to women farmers and youth farmers, as well as implementation of the incentive for agriculture. Uh, there was also good progress noted in terms of schools providing nutritious food and also the implementation of social relief of distress. Those were some of the things that went worked very well. They should have been included in this particular slide. Um, in terms of other aspects, um, in terms of the, uh, uh, and maybe I should highlight some some of the successful examples that were noted in the studies. The Sukuma Sake project in the KZN um, province is one of those that have stood out. The uh, showing inroads, um, mm -hmm. the the Western Cape also uh, with their food and nutrition security strategic plan. Uh, uh, with base cases there, 
of uh, the province or the government working with private sector and also non-governmental organization to, to implement in Limpopo where the Department of Health collaborate with the um, um, early childhood development centers. Those are some of the um, uh, green shoots or successful cases that needed to be highlighted. In this slide, we will indicate that um, there are certain limitations, however, that, for example, uh, where uh, implementing departments still uh, operate in silos, uh, at the national level, there is a bit of coherence and uh, traction, but at level of provinces, there's a lot of variations in terms of um, uh, also translating of uh, the, the high-level policy outcomes into implementable plans and the sense of feeling like people uh, are not legally bound to implement certain things, uh, a sense of no obligation or, or no enforcement that limits impact. Then the other thing in this particular slide um, that uh, there is still a silo mentality, uh, but also um, that internal arrangement whereby departments are Okay, I was distracted there. It tracks from a truly coordinated approach um, and the sense that um, the, the, there is a top-down uh, approach in the, in, the, in the implementation of the program. All right. Uh, here, uh, implementation is found to be slow um, especially uh, in terms of um, oversight and coordination uh, and the limited success in, in, in coordination, especially when we look at the, the coordination that was expected from the, and oversight from the office of the deputy president uh, was found to be limited. Um, as well as the, the leadership that could have been taken uh, by the offices of the premiers in the province, uh, uh, because they are expected to, they were expected to sort of convene the line departments and help in the coordination, but that had, had been limited uh, in in almost all all provinces. Those are things that need to be to be uh, improved which reflects on the political will and the convening authority, the limitations there. Uh, and the lack of visibility of the plan to stakeholders, that is, there needs to be much greater awareness amongst the potential beneficiaries of this program so that they can demand services, but also limited awareness amongst the, the private sector players and the NGOs that should actually extend the capacity for making the implementation more effective in reaching the beneficiaries. So, so that those are some of the weaknesses that uh, are noted in this study. And also the issue about the 86.8 .8 million that was costed um, uh, to, to in the initial stages to support implementation that money had not actually been made available or there's lack of clarity amongst the stakeholders about how did this work. Uh, yet departments had to use their already allocated budget to reprioritize and support initiatives that link to support this particular program. Um, also here, um, the, the issue of data collection there is lack of data at the routine implementation level, uh, which can then help to track progress in much more uh, easier ways um, um, uh, that are, can, can be attributed to activities of specific departments. But rather, most of the data used in this study are at the macro level. Um, the, 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 there, there needs to be improvement in terms of data items so that we can respond to the 29% of the um, of the indicators that were, were selected for this particular study. In terms of the recommendations, 
uh, the study recommends or evaluation recommends that we should uh, government should commence with the next iteration of this program given its importance um, there are several activities that need to be done, which are listed there, but also as part of the next iteration, the plan and its element must be integrated into the existing uh, planning processes. For example, as we enter now in government, the next iteration of the medium term strategic planning, uh, this, the results from this study should be uh, shared with that uh, team, the the, pro, uh, the that process, so that they are integrated, including at the national level and also at the provincial level, sub national level, so that um, um, key outcomes can then be defined and integrated into the planning uh, process. Then recommendation number three: uh, there must be resources allocated. It's about seven recommendations. Resources allocated in terms of funding and human capital. Um, there must also be a use of um, existing legislative mechanism because there is um, existing legislative mechanism that can enable improvement in this program, including the intergovernmental relations framework, as well as the special planning and land use management, uh, the SPLUMA um, Act. There must also be um, a greater awareness mechanism to create greater awareness um, and uh, encouraging active citizenry and also championing by the high offices, uh, that is the, the, the office of the president, um, the uh, offices in the uh, premier's offices, uh, as well as... Um, um, and uh, conclude. Societies. And then in conclusion, we will skip the next set of, of slides uh, in order to conclude. Um, the evaluation results and recommendations were presented, discussed within DPME, but also it is important that the process is underway to migrate secretariat role of this particular project program from DPME to DALRAD. Um, and, and the fact that uh, DALRAD is leading a process already of developing the National Food and Nutrition Plan, which will take into account cognizance of these um, recommendations of this study. So it's recommended that the committee notes um, the, the, the presentations. Thank you very much and back to you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, uh, DDG Mashamba. Honorable members, that is uh, the briefing uh, from uh, the DPME. Uh, on uh, uh, the both uh, presentations that we had uh, requested. We will now open the session for questions of clarity or comments. Honorable Dr. Kabe. The Honorable Dr. Tlape. The Honorable Tate Masipa. Uh, Chairperson, uh, thank you very much. And to the DPME, uh, thank you for the presentation and good morning to colleagues. Chair, uh, let me start by saying that uh, I welcome really the study. Um, and uh, my real worry is that, you know, this um, report come to us, you know, towards the end. And as you know, Chair, that we are busy with many, many activities right now. And our really um, indulgent um, on this study will probably be not as um, we would have wanted to. Um, Chair, this is a very, very important study. Um, six million of our uh, citizens are going to bed hungry. 62% of young people are unemployed. Um, recent indications are that one job, you know, attracts about 900 to 1,000 CV. While the study, like I said, you know, is relevant, my concern, Chair, is that it contradicts many of the evidence and science base study that really focused on 
um, land reform and land restitution in terms of the impact that the, this um, a program has had uh, to the families and the beneficiaries because in some of the studies you know it is indicated that you know people are even worse off you know uh, we had our own oversight visit during our uh, joint committee um portfolio uh, engagement with the labor uh, colleagues where we were in northwest and you have seen with your own eyes chair uh, those people of Northwest who have received, you know, the farm from this uh, particular program, if not uh, the uh, uh, the other program, and uh, the living condition and the dire poverty that those people are living under pose the, uh, you know, uh, the receipt of the farms in terms of really the issue of the post-settlement support that they did not really receive. So we we really um, chair at the moment. Um, um, there, there are many questions that we need really to uh, engage uh, these studies. But I would really have preferred that we spend you know the whole day really dissecting because there are quite a number of questions. Um, one for me really right now is to uh, they've given us a bit of a sample in terms of what the sample they have used. But the question is. Um, what is their uh, uh, their answer with regards to other studies? You know, the studies that obviously is the secondary studies is on the desktop. You can find in all the academic research, you know, I've gone through quite a number of them. What are they saying about those studies that are saying that, you know, the land reform and or especially the land restitution have really failed our people, especially regarding the post-settlement support and making their life much better. With regards to the um, uh, food um, system, um, as they were... Um, uh, the Chair, uh, thank you. With regards to the uh, food, food system, um, really the approach there, I agree with them totally, that is uncoordinated, is... Um, it's contribute really to major challenges that we are facing in this country. A better, you know, collaboration is required to ensure that, you know, the food system in this country really address the food issues. We are seeing a lot of food waste, especially at farm level, as a result of obviously uh, the lack of the collaboration amongst the players in the food system. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Dr. Masipa. Uh, the Honourable Trader. Thank you, Chairperson, and good morning to the to 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 the committee members and uh, the department. The chair, um, I'll be very brief and appreciating the report. Whilst doing that, chair, um, the report makes some interesting points. Is about the land restitution, say, being found to break the, 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 the cycle of poverty. Now, Chairperson, uh, it's interesting, this chair, because I've been following some uh, research <laughs> about Abanyabanklak, which is in contrary to what we are hearing now. Uh, which uh, for me is interesting, and I I I I appreciate the level of this report. Uh, can 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 Uti Mashamba share the data about factors that contributes to irrestitution? Uh, in terms of breaking the cycle of poverty. For instance, Chair, maybe it can show us, um, he can show us the, the level of household or individual income as a result of, <clears throat> of, of this land restitution change. My notes are not. 
Yes, chef. For now, let me pack them. Let me ask that one question until I sort out my question. Maybe if if we will have a second bite, I will I will contribute. Chef. Thank you, Honorable Trader. Uh, the Honorable Dade uh, Matias. Dade Matias. The Honorable uh, I'm going to start. Uh, greetings to all members of the Portfolio Committee, the support staff of the committee and the Department of uh, DPME. Uh, from the presentation, Chairperson, the first presentation, to me, it created a picture of saying the department or government wants to sort of uh, establish the means after having heard, after, after having uh, 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 collected the, the what do you call, the, 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 the information on how people are living since they took the preferred uh, uh, monetary compensation rather than uh, uh, land. Now that this has been done, it's just a, 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 a stupid question, if I could, I could say. Now that this has been done, didn't this create an impression for the people simply because some have utilized the, 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 the monies that they, they received and are without jobs currently, didn't this uh, create an impression that maybe government has maybe some other means of assisting them uh, to emancipate them from, from, from the, the current challenges that are, are facing? I understand people amongst those who preferred for, who went for, for, for monetary, uh, 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 monetary uh, segments. Now they've uh, utilized the money and this, they see now the value of having land. Uh, one today, one day, demand from the from the state to, to, to be sort of a provided piece of land where they could maybe establish themselves. Things like uh, maybe start uh, uh, um, these uh, small holding farms where they could maybe start uh, uh, pro producing their own uh, produce in order to, to support their families. This is what uh, came to my mind, Chairperson. Uh, it's not a question, but uh, just uh, what I've, I've just gathered from 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 what uh, the presenter has just been saying on, on on the first presentation and on the second one. No, I don't think I have uh, any 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 comments. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honourable Tabekulu, uh, the Honourable Memasho. The Honorable Memato. Honorable Trader, I see your hand. Thank you, Chair. Earlier on, Chairperson, I was, <laughs> my gadget was giving me challenges, hence I could not really get where I I, I, I noted, I, I had my notes. So I was just hoping, Chair, when you conclude, if time permits, uh, just to 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 have one or two questions, Chair. Thank you. You are on if the platform. Go ahead. You are on the platform. Go ahead, uh, Honorable Trader. Oh, as in now, Chair. All right, Chairperson. Um, for instance, Chair, on one is a question, the. The presenter chair recommended that in one of their recommendations to ensure, I quote, to ensure the success of land restitution program, policymakers should consider the social cohesion of the community and provide appropriate support. Um, 
how how I wish uh, w- what is it that we must uh, uh, in, 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 in 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 the perspective of oversight chef what is it that the commission proposes to the department or to us which they must complete which which they must implement so that uh, we can have a specific proposal and also we can do a thorough <clears throat> oversight. And what is it that they propose the department should do differently to achieve greater impact on the living standards and the well-being of the household when it comes to uh, 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 their proposal that have been affected by land disposition? And also, Chair, one last thing. Um, I'm hoping I did not hear. Maybe I missed the part where uh, uh, the presenter has report has has, has 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 presented that the there is an implementation on when it comes to their recommendation by the department. Maybe I missed that part, but I did not hear it. If it was not a uh, mentioned, Chair. What happened? Have they their recommendation being implemented by the department? If not, what my what what are the the reasons for that? Thanks, sir. Thank you, Honorable Chair. The Honorable Mamun Babama. Thank you very much, Chair, and uh, good morning to the colleagues and other people on the platform. Chair, I find both presentations rather lacking in detail. Um, um, I'm not sure whether the presenter has come before the committee before, um, because we we tend to like to know the detail, but because as they say, the devil is in the detail. That is where we um, actually find, you know, um, whether the 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 um, well, what they are saying, you know, they have really gone and done the study and we know exactly what is happening. Um, <clears throat> I've got a couple of questions here, sorry. Excuse my voice, I've got a bit, bit of a fever. Um, Section 26.7 of the Constitution talks to um, people receiving either restitution of a property or equitable redress. Now, we all know that... Um, most of the people went for the cash, uh, you know, instead of uh, property. So for clarity purposes, I'd like the presenter to clarify how many households and or individuals received as financial compensation as opposed to the number, the total number of beneficiaries who uh, actually went for restoration of land. Um, you know, we just tend to talk about most of the people went for cash without actually getting into the numbers. And um, further, Chair, in the idea of equitable redress, when they were doing their studies, did they find that the beneficiaries regard the compensation amount as equitable redress, given the documented loss and hardships that they suffered during the land dispossessions? And Chair, another thing that is very important did they do? Did the study come out with evidence, or should I say, did the study actually go to the people who received financial redress, looked at the amount that they received as compared to the land, and also found out what has happened with the money? Has the cash really assisted the household to get out of poverty, to get into a business? What has what have the people done with the money? That would have been very interesting to um to 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 find share. <clears throat> Excuse me. And yes, we, we are talking about uh, restitution and breaking the cycle of poverty. And um we are told that you know, uh, restitution has been very instrumental in, in breaking the cycle of poverty. But again, we lack the proof. 
we would like to know getting to the numbers because, for instance, um, they are finding contrast the earliest research report by Aliba et al. of 2013 in the book titled Livelihood After Land Reform, based on research in Limpopo province. They found that the poverty reduction benefits are typically insignificant. So it goes to my colleagues, uh, 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 Dr. Mas, um, I said doctor, I think you must go for that doctorate, Ndadi uh, Nuku. Uh, Honorable Nuku uh, spoke also about, did they look at other studies that were there beforehand and, and compare, you know, and compare the two? Um, for example, if they can show us levels of household and or individual incomes and employment or any other variable as a result of restitution, compare maybe pre and post transfer period so that one is able to demonstrate that restitution has indeed contributed to breaking the cycle of poverty. Can you conclude? Um, yes, Chair. Um, I've asked what the beneficiaries did with the money. Um, and, uh, you know, the committee is very interested in value for money on government investment in land reform. Where is the value of money? And I think if they had come with that in mind, we would have got more detail out of them. Chair, I do have other questions, but maybe we can put them in writing. Or maybe you can give me a chance if one of the other uh, presenters, other, other committee members don't have questions. Thank you. Sorry, Chair, just one, one, one question, please, on yes. the other presentation. Did they do a study on PESI? That's what I'm very much interested in. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mbabama. Akbare uh, Priyad. More, Voorzitter. More. I am so sorry for not switching on my video. I'm I'm not in a position to do so. I hope that will be fine. Chairperson, I maybe have two questions, and I would like to um uh, reiterate maybe what the Honorable Mbabama said, and that was um I don't get you know um from these presentations I don't I don't get clear information, um and that is perhaps my frustration. I don't see you know the figures the stats. Um, that I would have liked to see, but maybe um, I think she has covered it with regards to restitution. Um, it is it is said that that restitution needs to partake and needs to be part of poverty alleviation. And I would like to find out whether there is proof of poverty alleviation and whether that was only to the um, beneficiaries who received um, monetary payouts or those who received land. But is there proof that that poverty alleviation has taken place with a redress? And then with regards to food nutrition, um, has this, um, I see that food malnutrition has increased in all the provinces over the, the last five years. And I would like to know why has malnutrition increased? Have they done a study? Um, and, you know, what can be done to improve that? Chair, and I think I was covered by the other uh, speakers. Thanks. Thank you, Akbar Ebrit. The Honourable uh, Baukapa. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, Chair, and good morning to colleagues and uh, the presenters. And thank you very much for the, for these two presentations. My questions, Chair, on the first presentation is uh, what, around this prefer preference of cash over the land. Here, yeah, I understand that the, the restitution is a breaking cycle of poverty. But now I am worried whether this land, which is is uh, returned, maybe after having been taken away for fifty years, and when someone is given cash now, does it really break poverty? Is it not possible that maybe others would have preferred, or it have been sustainable if there was also some cash to continue? If maybe they will eat that cash and go back to poverty, uh, just get some clarity on that part whether it really works. And then secondly, uh. Is there no instance where 
land was given to a, one group and yet another group was preferring that the land is theirs. I'm certain this one because I think I have some ex, uh, experience and evidence. Thirdly, is there any evidence of a sustainable development where there has been restitution in the way that we can say now this group or this person was given land and then therefore it is a certain we can go forward and say they won't go back to poverty or that family. And last on this one, the also this part of, I think there are people who have been asking for this process for many years. I wonder if there's no situation where people have been waiting for 20 years and what is about that? What are those people saying? What are those people saying in that thing now? And another question, the lastly, I haven't heard anything about the role of the traditional leaders on this part of the land. On the second presentation chair, the food and nutrition, the practical implement, practical implementation, I would like to understand there because there is also that part of where we talk of uh, uh, concurrent functions because there is a province, and also there will be social development who might have been very important on this part while it is a competence of the department. So I would need some cut on that part. Also, is there no need or evidence of need of some infrastructure in the process of a, a provide provision of this nutrition? But on that part of practical impl implementation, I would like to get it clear how the under five get this uh, nutrition at the future. Thank you, Honorable Kappa. The Honorable Melitape. Melitape. Dr. Matthias, are you on the platform? The Honorable Letape, are you on the platform? Dr. Tape? Thank you, Chair, and good morning, colleagues. I'm multitasking, and my apology for late coming. So just one question that came to me when I went through this uh, report presentation because I missed the presentations. I just want to understand in terms of restitution program, the impact on individual households um, in terms of poverty reduction because the research chair, most of the research when you go through it, they attribute the failure of land reform on the perpetual poverty of those who should be beneficiaries. So has the presenters or the department looked into the impact in terms of individual households? Because we don't want to look into the group has benefited, people has been restituted and all that. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable uh, Dr. Tlapa. Honorable members, is there any other honorable member on the platform that I've not recognized? Honorable Papa, please mute the microphone. Chair, if I can if, have a second bite at some stage. Uh, you proceed, uh, Honorable Mbabama. Uh, since you are on the platform, we've got the limited time, so we want to get responses from the department before we are out of time. You may proceed. Thank you, Chair. Um, I also note that the evaluation was finalized in March 2023, and then 12, 12 months later, the DPME cannot report to this committee as to whether there is a management response by the commission and the department. It, it, it does not report to the committee if there is an improvement plan submitted by the department and the commission 
to the DPME. Uh, but if there is one, I apologize. And uh, could we please have those details? Um, it is very important that we, we, we get to the implementation. And also, Chair, uh, uh, I'd like to ask the DPME to submit to the committee the management response submitted to them by uh, Dalrad and the commission. We also request uh, the DPME to submit the improvement plan submitted to DPME by the department and the commission. Um, the report mentions six case studies, and yet um, we don't have we know proof of all the six case studies. If we can have that, please, uh, Chair, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Obama. Honorable members, uh, allow me to take this opportunity also to welcome uh, the report and the uh, presentations that have been put before the Portfolio Committee on Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development by the DPE, DPME, uh, the DDG Ubao Mashamba. I would uh, want uh, to uh, acknowledge uh, and uh, welcome the results of uh, this uh, study that they have undertaken, especially in so far as it shows that uh, restitution is a breaking is breaking the cycle of poverty. However, I would have uh, some questions that arise with uh, the department's presentation and I'd like them to clarify these issues. One honorable members would be this study was started in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, and the results uh, were released in March 2023. Obviously, it was affected by COVID. But uh, what I'd like uh, to know is what was the total cost of the study? if COVID uh, resulted in the extension of the research, what was the ed additional cost, if any? I would assume that uh, there were no extra costs from uh, that. Secondly, honorable members, at the high level, what is the broader message that this study is sending to parliament, to members of the public and all interested parties? I say so because the report states that majority of people opted for a cash and further suggested that this is breaking the cycle of poverty and it is contributing to the psychological well-being of the society. When it comes to land restoration, the report suggests that the results have not been satisfactory despite for confusing uh, despite uh, uh, not focusing on cases where land has been awarded but on equitable redress my worry is honorable members because it seems to suggest that we should focus on financial compensation rather than land restoration because the benefits are negligible. The financial compensation does not assist us to redress the skewed land ownership patterns in this country. And thirdly, the policy recommendations do not even attempt to address how policymakers should engage with the issue of non-satisfactory outcomes in terms of restoration. In fact, in my view, the report is weak on recommendations. Honorable members, if you look at uh, the psychological well-being, uh, this committee has dealt with complaints from the District 6 claimants and a petition from a number of Western Cape claimants, many of whom complained to the committee about the outcome of restitution in terms of uh, poor workmanship on the assets, houses that were given to them, and some elderly people lacked information about the status of their claims. Some of 
those people appeared to be in some state of distress, sadness, and quite disappointed with the progress of restitution. Has the study engaged with those types of people? What was your observation in so far as their psychological well-being uh, was concerned? I know in particular that uh, the District 6 uh, uh, case has only dealt with phase one of uh, the claims. There is still a number of outstanding uh, claims from pre-1998 that are outstanding. Uh, when will phase two and phase three be implemented? And how many of uh, the claimants are remaining in terms of uh, phase um, two and phase three? Can the committee also be furnished with a list of all the claimants in phase two and in phase three? Is the land, has any land been identified for both uh, phase two and phase three? What would be the cost for those uh, uh, phases? on uh, recommendations and further uh, restitution, honorable members. I looked at this evaluation with an interest in terms of its recommendation and what is to be done differently in order to achieve maximum benefits on the investment government is making by spending billions of rents in land acquisition and financial compensation. Sadly, there is very little specific recommendation that tells me what the commission and the department will be doing to improve the outcomes of restitution. You just informed us uh, that there will be a conference to map the way forward. If there are specific recommendations, you can share with the committee uh, and then for uh, DPME honorable members, uh, we would want, uh, I'd like to know what do you do when departments do not make, do not take the recommendations from evaluations or your monitoring reports? I ask this question because almost 12 months or a year after the report was released, you can't even share any insights on the types of progress reports you have received from the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, as well as from the Commission of Land Claims. Perhaps uh, you can share with us uh, the reporting milestones that have been agreed to with the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development and that of uh, uh, the uh, Commission on Land Claims. Uh, lastly, honorable members, uh, the primary uh, people that were stripped of their land in uh, their majority were traditional leaders right across the country. You would know that uh, uh, the wars of land disposition stripped many uh, chieftaincies and kingdoms of their land. I would like, like to understand in terms of uh, the DPME, how much land has to date been restored to traditional leaders? And in terms of uh, the evaluations that you have uh, done, uh, has the land that has been brought back to Traditional leaders brought about change in their uh, sphere of uh, areas and in their uh, own development of their own communities. Thank you. That will be all uh, the questions and comments from the committee. We'll now hand back to DPME for responses. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members on the questions that were posed. We welcome them. I think a maybe an overall response is, is that 
the the comments um, are being noted and then they must actually contribute to the planning of the conference that has been planned uh, in order that they get taken on board uh, because we expect that that conference will inform will will involve a number of experts in the field and also um a, a groups of beneficiaries or um, people that will speak uh, on on the side of beneficiaries as well as various other policy makers to digest all the available evidence not only this particular study uh, in formulating a way forward i think that is a an important takeaway uh, for for us uh, as a technical team from this process that is based on the fact that chair the an evaluation of this nature would have had a particular scope and its own limitations. It studies a particular subject matter on uh, given the times and 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 um and and the scope that's provided. But then how we look at it at the DPME is that or in the whole policy making process that it is it makes a contribution into the whole discourse. Um there must be consideration of a whole range of studies that uh, honorable members have raised the, the contradictions that have been I highlighted that a form of synthesis must actually inform a way forward so we are going to take into account the other uh, forms of evidence contributing to the whole discourse on the land restitution then as i say that um the the study did not also look into um start understanding the 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 sustainability beyond beyond restitution just because of the scope uh, definition i will ask uh, the colleagues that are in attendance here who is um there is um, uh, the commissioner, uh, Ms. Nomfundo Ntloko, and also the lead researcher, Dr. Malcolm Caswell, to deal with specific matters that relate to, uh, for example, the statistics uh, on land versus compensation. Um, what will um, the community do with the with the monies and also issues about the long-standing claims because that information we 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 don't have from from DPME but they have the latest version of that information and also the the data I think Dr Caswell can deal specifically with the calculation of the economic benefit suffice to say that the the study makes its conclusion based on a comparison of beneficiary group and also a, a control group uh, that was identified for the study. That is the people that did not receive and those that received, and it draws the differences between the two. And then that's how it makes a conclusion. Uh, but it may have not in, in entertained the other, the other questions that um, are, are there. Then there are questions around uh, the new food and nutrition uh, security. We have Dr. Masilela also to to briefly explain the the results on 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 that. I think we'll start firstly with um, uh, maybe let me let me uh, uh, attend to the question of what does the department DPME do when um, recommendations are not attended to. Um, all we have is guidelines for evaluation that you take it on good faith that. Uh, as we present these findings, um, we have a way of escalating them to make sure that they are discussed both by the leadership of the uh, custodian department, which is in this case, the direct, and also the minister concerned uh, to make sure that this gets implemented. Then all we do is to make follow-ups in terms of that. They are the guidelines that specify timeframes by which certain actions should be done, 
but in some cases you'll find that uh, there are um, um, uh, lags in terms of implementation of some of these findings. Uh, let me allow also DG um, Dr. Nguna to, lead, to, to, to come in uh, before the, the commissioner could, uh, could, could step in to answer some of the direct questions in terms of the data and, and processes. Thank you. DG. Welcome, DG uh, Bangkona. You may proceed. Uh, he might have a connection problem, which he told me about from where he is. Maybe uh, uh, as he's preparing, let, let us allow the commissioner to come in and deal with some of the clarification issues around the land restitution program as a whole. Thank you. Honorable Chair. Molo Mamukoboto Nijani. Sia Pila Gakulum Pati Unjanuen. Pila Nata Gabi Konto, you may proceed. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, uh, for the opportunity. Um, firstly, I would um, like to greet um, the Honorable Committee members and um, communicate that. Um, uh, this study has uh, happened over a period of uh, a number of years, I think over five, but um, uh, Professor um, Kazwal, uh, who is the lead in the study, uh, is connected and um, as this was an independent study, I would appreciate it if he can communicate the actual key findings um, and um, uh, the, the, the impact. I think this is a, a impact evaluation study and it looked at specific things um, so that I would really appreciate it if he just gets an opportunity to briefly just highlight some of those. But uh, from uh, our perspective as the commission, we did receive the report, um, but we also had to do our own um, internal processes. We thought that this we would have to report um, uh, to uh, in, um, internal um, ministerial processes first um, before we can um, go out. And also we had to get approval in order for us to start planning the, the conference, which um, DPE has already highlighted. And um, our position is that uh, we wanted to understand the study first and communicate with um, the um, professors uh, and the people who actually did the study and then prepare for the um, conference because our view is that uh, the things that are highlighted in the study are things that the commission is not necessarily just going to go and want to um, resolve or implement on, on their own as technocrats, but they are going to require uh, policy um, adjustments. Uh, but it is important for us not to just assume that uh, the policy adjustments would um, come from us only, but that there will be a need for um, discussion and engagements uh, from um, the um, professional um, bodies, uh, from civil society, from the claimants themselves, from uh, international experts, because uh, this has been an international study uh, one of the first of, it, of its kind. And so we don't look at it as a short term. And we also remember we're looking at it from a reflection of um, the impact over the lifetime uh, of the commission. And so our intention is to have those policy discussions so that they are framed for what can be done in into the future. And also just to um, state that I have heard um, this um, concept of 90% uh, of the beneficiaries taking financial compensation. 
we have not done a technical or scientific assessment on um, how many beneficiaries take land versus those who take financial compensation. Uh, if we look at our numbers, we state that uh, 3. Million, 3.8 million hectares of land has been uh, restored to claimants at 25 billion at the cost and financial compensation uh, at 23 uh, uh, billion. But I think what is important to communicate is that it's not apples to apples because you can have a community in the Northwest which receives a thousand, 10,000 hectares of land. And that is a community of five, 10,000 um, uh, households. Uh, for example, versus a claim uh, of a labor tenant uh, in um, um, an, an urban area like uh, Patomena, where it was um, um, informal um, land settlement of Umkuku, if I can put it that way, and, and the extent of hectares you can't compare to the extent of hectares that we give. So the financial compensation that is then given is for the right to occupy versus um, the, the customary right on the other hand. And so it is not correct, therefore, for us to say uh, it's equal to 90%. Um, I think that further work would need to be done for us to actually get to understand what is the differentiation between financial compensation uh, uh, beneficiaries and land beneficiaries. Um, and, uh, uh, Chair, if I would be uh, uh, allowed to respond in writing in terms of the cost so that I don't thumbs up. Uh, and um, also, uh, uh, just uh, finally to say we acknowledge um, the issues that have come from the report and we are quite quite keen uh, to definitely make sure that we mitigate, mitigate and implement any policy changes that would be recommended uh, by our principles uh, in view of the study. Uh, but um, we welcome the study because in fact, we as a commission were the ones who initiated the study because that's exactly what we wanted to understand is the impact in in, in restitution under general. Uh, Chair, can I please just briefly give to Professor Caswell to just identify some of the key uh, outcomes and also uh, respond to some of the issues that came in terms of uh, uh, the study itself and the clarification of um, the issues that have been raised by the committee members. Thank you, Chair. Go ahead, Professor Kezwa. Thank you very much, Chair. And, um... I greet all the members of the committee. Um, um, as Commissioner uh, Dloko said, um, the study has involved uh, lots of role players over a very long period of time. Um, in earnest, the work started in 2017, but the data collection began in 2018 um, and uh, essentially stopped when COVID hit. Um, and then resumed in 2022. Um, and we completed the work last year, uh, early last year uh, in 2023. Um, so essentially in those two periods, um, we collected uh, first in the initial period between 2018 and 2020, we collected data on a comparison group and the comparison group is comprised of all settled but not finalized claims. In other words, these were claims that are legally um, uh, attributed to, to the claimants. Um, but the award of restitution, whether in terms of land rights or in terms of the financial compensation, had not yet been received by the, by the, by the beneficiaries and claimants. And then the period 2022 to 2023, um, when we resumed the work, uh, that period focused on collecting data on um, beneficiaries who had received their restitution awards. Um, and the way we did the data collection uh, was, was essentially split into two, two, two different methodologies, partly because COVID required us to 
reconfigure uh, the scope of what we were trying to to collect uh, um, and and get really to the bottom line um, outcomes that that our prior work and our prior reading of the the gray literature and um, the way restitution has been understood um, by by um, you know by academics and policymakers that have studied this question since um, since since forced removals were were really documented in the Circus People Project, for example, which was a study also led by my unit Saldru in the late seventies and early eighties. And so, in the in the collection of the, the 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 group of people who were beneficiaries, which we are calling the treatment group, uh, we looked at all of the claims finalized over the ten year period from twenty thirteen to twenty twenty two. So, a decade of finalized claims constituted the frame from which we drew the sample. And the reason for the twenty thirteen cutoff was mostly due to the fact that prior to twenty twenty thirteen. The record keeping and the uh, the digitization of uh, particularly the the section forty two Ds that give us all of the information necessary to pull the samples from those were not um, as thoroughly done as prior to 2020, uh, 2013. So we looked at that period of ten years, and for each of the ten years, uh, we drew a random sample of approximately ten percent. Of the claims finalized, so it was a random sample. In, in for any given year, say 2015, we would then have a mix of claims where there were very large uh, restitution awards or very large pieces of land that were transferred, and they would also be in very small family claims. And um, and one can do no better than that because uh, one has to just depend on the fact that the the, the drawing of those samples was random to give us the distribution. Uh, that we were looking for uh, to ensure that the the study sample was representative of the population of of uh, finalized uh, claims, and so we eventually um, uh, drew samples from five hundred and five claims, um, and those five hundred and five claims cover three thousand just over three thousand three hundred people. There's no study that's been done of this magnitude on this question ever in South Africa or elsewhere where there's been uh, restitution or reparations programs that have been implemented by um, societies that have undergone conflict in the past. Um, so 505 claims, 3,300 individuals. These 3,300 individuals are roughly split between the beneficiary group, so the so-called treatment group, and the control group. It's about 1,500, 1,600 in each group. Um, and um, because of the changes we had to make after COVID, um, the way we collected the data after COVID had to be telephonic. Um, uh, all human subjects data collection worldwide was, was halted um, between 2020 and 2022. So we had to uh, be agile and, and adapt the, the various instruments in order to focus on the most important bottom line outcomes that we think restitution could have affected. Um, so we went from the control group data collection process, which was between 2018 and 2020, where we were doing in-person data collection, spending roughly half a day in a beneficiary household, collecting lots of additional um, uh, types of outcomes to a telephonic interview process that took uh, roughly 20 to, to uh, sorry, 30 to 40 minutes to collect only the most salient outcomes that we thought a study of this nature would um, would be capable of answering definitive questions. And so the three types of areas that we look for outcomes on is on consumption, uh, mental health, and cognition. Why consumption? Well, in the study of poverty, uh, household consumption is is one of the key um, types of variables that we look at. We can also look at income. Um, we could also look at nu nutritional intake. Um, income is a lot more messy, 
and um, and the same is true for nutritional intake. Um, so to do that type of data collection over the phone would have been next to next to impossible. Consumption, on the other hand, um, is the standard way um, that large household surveys um, uh, try and make inferences about household welfare. And so we um, we 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 did a. Um, we did a very detailed consumption module. And what we found is that per capita household consumption for uh, for beneficiaries that are receiving awards of about 200,000, um, whether that 200,000 is, is an actual cash transfer or the, the, the value of the right conferred for, for land that has been restored, uh, for that value uh, of award, uh, per capita monthly consumption goes up by 36%, which is a very, very strong effect. And this is a long-term effect because, as I mentioned, the data constitutes claims finalized as far back as 10 years ago. And then on mental health, we found quite a striking drop in, um, in the risk of depression for uh, the restitution beneficiaries as compared to the control group. Um, enough, for instance... For a control group um, a respondent to be categorized at risk for depression prior to receiving the rest restitution award to being not at risk for depression after receiving the restitution award. And there are a number of ways in which to interpret these findings um, that speak to some of the questions that have been asked, but I, I don't want to go on forever. Um, so Chair, uh, um, maybe I'll stop here and if, if you require further input in terms of addressing the questions, I can continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Chief. Thank you, uh, honorable members. Those are the responses from the DPME as well as from uh, the commission. I see the hand of uh, the DG, Ubangkona. Uh, you may proceed. No, uh, good morning, Chair, honorable members. And colleagues, my apology as I struggled with the connection at the start. And, and Chair, I will not switch on my camera because I am still struggling with e connection. Chair, I just want to make some commitments in terms of the way forward uh, from this engagement. One is that we have started to look at the APP of this uh, department, DARAT. And we have given them our feedback on how they can deal with some of these issues that are being raised here. So I'm trying to illustrate as not in vain, but assisted us also in the analysis of the APP. So our request, Chair, that when the time comes to discuss the APP, we be asked to come back as DPME so that we can show how we have engaged with the department to ensure that some of the issues that are coming up from this engagement are translated into the APPs. We do this, Chair, because the APPs are very key, are very important instruments that allow us and Parliament to ensure that uh, whatever issues come up from this kind of studies are followed up. So I'm making a commitment to return with an analysis that we've done on the extent to which this department is taking forward issues that have emerged from this engagement. The other issue which will have to come with that is expenditure analysis that we will draw from our engagement, you know, from, from the budget allocations so that we can assist the committee to have a sense of the extent to which money is being allocated to support competing needs in this uh, particular uh, area. As we heard from the Minister of Finance, we don't have enough money as government, but the key issue is whether the way we use money allow us to prioritize. So we will assist the committee with that. We've done that work, so we'll come back on that. And also, we have started to think about the next uh, administration what are the key issues that are coming up now that were not completed in the current administration 
which will be taken into the next administration. So we can also speak to that. The last point in terms of the uh, issues that come up is on the role of the royal leadership, whether we have been engaging with them and what are the issues. Chair, at this point in time, I can say that there are two strategies that we have emerged in government, uh, rural development strategies. One from the Department of Traditional Affairs and one from this uh, Department of the Darad. And what we are doing as DPMA is an analysis of the extent to which the two strategies complement each other to avoid the situation whereby we have overlapping uh, strategies. So at the right time, I will also request that we come back to uh, the committee on this issue of the two strategies and the extent to which the, the strategies uh, prioritize the kind of issues that are, are being raised by, uh, by, by honorable uh, members. And as part of that, we'll then talk about the royal uh, leaders, their role that uh, they are planning. Otherwise, say if they are, because we do have other reports and other things that we do as DPME, and we will then sit down with the minister and identify supplementary information or supplementary reports that need to be sent to the committee so that we can provide a much bigger picture in a situation whereby what we presented today did not cover everything. So we will do that and also highlight some of our own interventions to assist in this particular area. So those are the three commitments one can make by way of way forward. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, DJ. At uh, DPME Bankuna and uh, the officials of uh, DPME who were uh, able to make uh, the presentations uh, on, uh, before the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture and Reform and Rural Development. Allow me, honorable members, uh, to also thank uh, the uh, Commissioner. Mamukawoto for the input uh, and responses that they've made with uh, um, Professor Keswa. We will, uh, honorable members, request that uh, the responses to the questions that uh, were sponsored by the honorable members be sent to the Secretariat uh, in writing. So as we can uh, go through them and see as to uh, how we can do a follow-up uh, meeting on uh, the states uh, that uh, the committee uh, needs to uh, look more in detail on, because we want a, a really a substantial impact uh, on our people that restitution has been able to make. And in order to do that, we will need a, a real a substantive a states in that regard. Honorable members, our time is a, a done for this meeting as we we're supposed to be completed at 10. I will conclude the meeting here by requesting that uh, the department and the commissioner uh, send us the questions, uh, responses uh, by no later than uh, end of business day, next week, Friday being the 1st of March, so that we can be able to uh, plan and plot a way forward uh, for our follow-up meeting. Honorable members, thank you for having availed yourself for uh, the meeting and been able to engage with both presentations made uh, by the DPME. Would like to thank the DG uh, Uba Unkuna, as well as Uba Mashamba from DPME and the uh, officials of DPME, as well as the Commissioner Uma Mukaboto. And uh, Professor Keswa, I see also uh, the Deputy Minister Squatcher is on the platform. DM Spulsil, and uh, would like to thank you for having attended uh, the meeting. And uh, our meeting, honorable members, stands adjourned.
please have a wonderful weekend ahead and uh, spend it with your loved ones. Uh, be safe on the roads and those that are headed to Guazulu Natal have a, a great uh, trip this weekend. Thank you. Matibango. Thank you, Chair Sila. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, 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 Thank you,